<laughs> there, there is so much going on right now. It's, it's unbelievable no. how much is happening right now. It, it's incredible, really. It really is. I mean, we, it's, it, we can't even keep track of it all, Dave. It's, it's, you guys like us who are like news hounds, who are, you know, on the cusp and cutting edge of, of what's the latest data, what's the latest information coming out. I mean, we get overwhelmed at times, you know. <laughs> I mean, you and I were just talking right before we got on. It's like, yeah, you know, I just want to sit home and eat a sandwich and knock knock down a cold one sometimes and take yeah. a break from it all. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, oh, man. Let, let's start off here. And, uh, I mean, everyone, you know, we're all talking about the economy. We see the Fed out there. We see, you know, the U.S. government, the corporate media. You know, they're continually trying to paint this picture that everything is fine. And in the background of all the propaganda, and you look through all the stuff they've been saying, we see other things happening in the economy. I mean, we see GDP, I mean, that's declining. Manufacturing, declining. Retail sales, down. Looks like the housing bubble is popping. And then we hear the global central banks around the world, like in China, Japan, France, Brazil, Colombia, they're all dumping U.S. debt. Mm-hmm. Is is this a sign that something is about to happen? I mean, why are these countries dumping the debt right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think the most serious sign of this whole entire thing, the most serious sign is that the dollar, you know, since 2008, because of TARP, because of TWIST, because of ZERP, because of, of, of all the bailouts that, the, that have been done on Wall Street and all the quote-unquote stimulus, what they've done is they've overstimulated the dollar to the point that it has become a toxic currency that is underlying every single financial instrument that has been chopped up and sold throughout the world as AAA securities. And uh, these financial weapons of mass destruction, which you see collated with derivatives, have created such an environment of destruction capital malformation, uh, and risk, the likes of which we have never seen. And that is the end result of it, Dave, because of our monetary policies, we have created an environment of risk. And those that are in the know, certain central banks in certain countries that understand what's going on, uh, certain economists in certain nations who are in charge of certain monetary policies in certain countries that are awake and aware to what is going on, are dumping and getting out of the dollar, and they're doing it at a rapid clip. The only reason, and I really mean this, the only reason why the dollar index hasn't collapsed in onto itself is simply because of pure intervention, manipulation, fraud, and graft. That is the only thing keeping the economy up. It's incredible, Dave, to witness such a thing. We've, you and I have never seen this in our lifetime. No, we have not. The amount of debt from the private Western Central Bank, it is so large right now. And what was it, like a year ago, maybe it was a year mm-hmm. ago, Christine Lagarde was out there, and they're talking about how they can reduce this debt because as it continually grows, it, it cannot be sustained. I mean, we have evidence from Greece where Greece is collapsing. We see Italy we see um, France, um, they're continually need to borrow more and more money from the ECB. Banks are failing. The U.S.'s debt is continually rising. And what I was talking about with Christine Lagarde, who was saying, you know, we need to pay off, not pay down the debt, but pay a little bit off so we can keep the system going. And maybe we need like a 10% wealth tax. And we see out in Greece mm-hmm. where... You know, they're looking to have everyone register their wealth, movable and immovable assets. And it looks like this is going to go into effect February of 2017. And it's looking like they might be the test case to see how this works out. Um, Because it's to me, it's looking like, all right, cash under the bed. I mean, many people are not going to. You know, just voluntarily say, hey, listen, I got $100,000 under the bed, but they want that. They want your art. They want your gold. They want everything. And then they want to tax you 
a certain rate. Do you see this spreading across to other countries? Yeah, 1,000%. Uh, uh, the reason for that is this. Uh, Southern Europe, and I need people to take a strong, hard look at the Southern European countries. They have always, for a lot of reasons, and for many times throughout many points in history, has served as a beta test to much of the Western world. Uh, recently, we've seen in you know, 2012, 2013, the first bail-in ever to occur, which was in Cyprus. You know, the Cypriot people woke up and they found out 40, 60 percent of their accounts are, are gone. Uh, we've seen the and that bail out, that bail in, you know, transmuted its way all the way to Austria, where Austrians in a certain bank, I think it was called a uh, Hecta Asset Revolution, whichever whatever the name is, uh, they woke up to the fact that a great percentage of their profits or, or, or accounts have been pilfered. So we've seen this with bail-ins. We've seen this with negative interest rates. We're seeing how they're floating around. Now, with the whole thing with Greece, it's pretty interesting. Uh, they want the Greeks, like, like what Lagarde said, maybe if we, you know, we, we could pay down the debt a little bit. I want you guys to really focus on what she just said. If we can raise the taxes, we can, quote, unquote, pay down this debt a little bit. That's fancy talk. Okay, that's just fancy. That's wishful thinking. That is a smokescreen, Dave. Because let's be honest here, most people they get their eyes glazed over when you talk about millions, billions, and trillions. These are just words that are thrown around so cheaply that people have no concept of it. So when guys like you, Dave, and myself, and Sean, and all the guys that are out there that are warning about this stuff, and we come out and we say, "Hey, you know what? Your your, your derivative debt is one point five quadrillion." That kind of goes over people's heads. And people need to understand that Lagarde, when she says that if we can you know, increase taxes to pay down just this debt a little bit, that is simply newspeak for we're going to steal your wealth. Because there's no way anybody, by raising any sort of personal taxes by 10% or even 100%, could pay down or even put a debt into the global debt that stands at $1.5 quadrillion. They can't do it. It's a mathematical impossibility. So the question becomes, and that multi-quadrillion dollar question is, what is this tax really about? Well, it's further wealth extraction. The system is about to collapse. When they say, hey, we want you to register your bank accounts, how much cash on hand you have, if you have any you know, precious metals, pieces of art, if you, you know, whatever, Okay, your pet dog, register all of it. Okay, why? Because this way we have on a ledger what you own, what your quote-unquote net asset is. So when we collapse, and like I said, I've warned about this forever, Dave. I always said when a nation goes broke, its security apparatus goes from looking from within, oh, from threats from without and begins to look for threats from within. Okay. And you have to understand this, and people really need to get this into their heads. When an economy collapses in a country, your biggest competitor is really not your neighbor. Okay, Your biggest competitor for supplies, for precious metals, for food, for water, is the government itself. Because they are in a race against you to stockpile everything and the kitchen sink. So here, here it is. And then take what you have. So here's what the Greeks are doing. Give us all this information about you. So when the time comes when we implode, collapse, and or default, or goes into an, a massive economic downturn, which is only a matter of time, we will come and take what you have because we'll say, we'll cite national security. Hmm. Because there's no liquidity anymore in the banks in order to take them, Dave. That's the problem. Because there's no more liquidity, because central banks to this point have been stretched thin. That's why I laugh at people that, that say, oh, they could just keep printing forever. No, they can't. They can't keep printing forever. So we have reached what we are reaching very close, Dave, to that mark, that, that this clear line in the sand that I call the, the monetary climax. Okay, the, 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 the monetary climax of, of, of printing to oblivion. We're, we're reaching that point. There's just no more printing you could do. Now, if you notice this, Dave, you know, first they start rolling out negative interest rates. And as the people are listening to this show, tuning into X22 report, hearing Dave and I go back and forth, 
you have to understand there's 13 trillion, that's with a T, 13 trillion dollars worth of government bonds that are just being traded negatively, that are in negative right now as we speak globally. So negative interest rates are becoming a, 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 a reality. So that's, that is pilfering. That is, that is legalized robbery. Okay. And what is, what has happened every, in every location where negative interest rates have gone forth? What has happened? Well, people quickly got their money out of the banks. Look in Japan. Vault sales, okay, and safe sales are through the roof. People are buying personal vaults, personal safes. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're buying, it's going out the, it's like, you know, gangbusters it's going, okay? It's a, that's, a, that's how big of a sale there is. And people are taking their yen and their gold and they're stashing it in their own personal vaults, okay? Now, the same thing is happening in Europe. So now the Europeans are like, wait a minute, you know, we're rolling on negative interest rates. Only the dumbest of the dumb are keeping their accounts with us. What do we do with the rest of the people? We want to get their wealth too. Well, let's come up with this idea where they have to list every asset and they have to list all their wealth and then we'll take a portion of that. This is the type of insanity that's happening. It, it, it saddens me that many in the West do not have the cojones, the spine, the, the, the intestinal fortitude to go up to these bureaucrats, punch them dead in the nose, and tell them to knock it off, get lost, or we're going to break your knees. What happened to that? I remember the good old days. That's what we used to do, Dave. But mm -hmm. now it's just like, you know, forget about it. These are the, the lords over us. And it's crazy as the entire Western world is being transformed into a neo-feudal serfdom. Unbelievable. From what you're seeing right now, do you think the uh, central banks, are, are they still in control of the economy worldwide, or do you think they're actually losing a little bit of the control of what is happening right now? Oh, they're losing a lot of control. They're losing a lot of control. See, the, 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 the two weapons that a central bank has is the manipulation of currency and the issuance of credit, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they have literally, okay, they have literally, you know, emptied their entire clip of, of, of ammunition, of all the financial tricks they have up their sleeve in order to correct, rectify, and fix this economy. There is nothing more they can do. You know, this latest round of, of uh, you know, this proposal is being floated around, which will be in effect at some point, which is negative interest rates. That is their latest trick, and they're trying that out. They're all out of ideas. What's happening is that the Western world is, and that uh, Western world and fiat monetary policy is hitting a stone, rock-solid wall of gold reality, Dave. And what's because what's happening is in response to all the paper fraud, in response to all the manipulation, in response to all the dishonesty, what is occurring is nations in the world that are awake, that are astute to what is going on, are reverting to a hard asset physical economy, with gold being the center focal point of all medium exchange and valuation. So in that type of a realm, the, the fictitious paper empires of the West, which have no gold, which have nothing to offer, in this, and they have no real physical economies except for, a, except for a handful of countries, they're at a loss. There's nothing more that can be done except manipulate, warmonger, rattle sabers, continue to extract the worth, wealth of the population, at the same time beg to be part of the of the table being a beg for a position at the table of what you know Russia China and the rest of the world is building that's what that's that's the reality that the you, that western central bankers are are waking up to do you think the us government the the central bankers the fed here are they prepared with backing this next currency with gold or do you think the dollar won't be the next currency. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of 
you know, stipulations, rumors. Uh, my good buddy Bix um, has a Bix where he has his uh, theories on the uh, the you know the the Matsushita's gold and and there's hidden gold this that and the other. Um, my my personal take on it is what's going to happen with the U.S. Well, there's going to be two scenarios playing out. Okay, mm-hmm. and one thing that me and Bix definitely agree on is, is yeah, there are good guys and bad guys. I think the facts are. Are laid bare because if it wasn't for the good guys, Dave, we would not be having the type of information and leaks that we're seeing. You know, right? Um, so that being said, my my philosophy is this: if the good guys in the United States win, I could see them defaulting the debt. I could see them reissuing a new currency, a dollar, but I could see that dollar being silver backed, and I see silver being a very dominant, um, you know, currency backer. Uh, for the Western Hemisphere, uh, the United States, um, Mexico, Canada, and South America, because it's very plentiful here, and, and it's very valuable as well. I could see that happening. Okay, uh, the bad guys win. I could see the issuance of two types of dollars. Um, I could see uh, a local domestic dollar, and my, you know, colleagues, guys like uh, Jim Willie, uh, great guy. Uh, Jim Jim always talks about it. He calls it the Scheiß dollar, German for for poop. Right. Okay. So um, a local a local dollar and an international trade dollar. Uh, I've had this confirmed also with sources in Denmark who've suppo- who have claimed to have supposedly already seen it, what it looks like and the design for it. Um, so the local dollar uh, will be devalued anywhere between, you know, 40 to 60 percent. The international trade dollar anywhere between you know 30 to 50 percent. But either way, it's going to absolutely slaughter and hurt the average working American uh, who will be at the mercy of these types of monetary policies. Um, again, uh, and, and between those two scenarios, there are variables. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But what's happening is, you know, will the Fed be in control of, of this? Um, no, it, 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 and again, it depends on you know which side controls the argument, the narrative, and 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 controls the the decisions that will bring uh, you know these two realities to fruition. Which it will be, we don't know. And that's why it's important that people listen into programs such as this and 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 other programs that are waking people up to this, so that the word can spread. Uh, we cannot stop, and I've said this so many times, Dave. We can't stop this economic collapse. But we can determine who controls the narrative on the other side of this. That's the most important thing. True. V, when, when you mentioned the two different currencies, um, international and I think you said domestic currency, yeah. mm-hmm. what happened for those people who have, let's say, you know, retirement accounts who are getting pensions, those yeah. people who have savings, who mm-hmm. are holding on to the dollar that have no gold whatsoever, they just have stocks, what happens to that? Well, already look at American retirement systems. They're already in the toilet bowl. You, they're, they're swirling in the toilet as we speak, right? Uh, pension funds in this country are $8 trillion in the hole. They're all underfunded. The majority of them are underfunded. Like in New York, they're, they're, they're severely underfunded. Their, their books are cooked. Um, recently, I was, you know, read a great article by Dave Stockman and my shout out to you, Dave Stockman, for, uh, for pointing it out. I, I, I've been railing against Tesla. For quite some time. Number one, I hate electric cars; they suck. Uh, number two, uh, I think Elon Musk is a is a con man par excellence, and he knows where how to get his bread, you know, buttered by somebody else. So I hate Tesla. I hate everything they do. So, um, and you, 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 I've come to this realization is because Tesla is not selling cars. Mm. Tesla is selling carbon credits. Tesla is practically giving their cars away. Tesla cannot exist. If it weren't for government subsidies, okay, Tesla couldn't make soapbox racers. If it weren't for government subsidies, they'd be out of business in no time, right? So, what is Tesla doing? Well, here's a great example of crony capitalism. And, and David Stockman on you know on, on ContraCorner dot com, he he spoke about a great article. Um, the pension fund in Michigan, okay, one of the Michigan pension funds. It's a it's a one point five billion dollar fund decided to buy almost 400,000 shares. It was like 375 or 400,000 shares of Tesla stock. This company makes no money. 
hasn't turned a profit, makes no money, loses money on every car they sell, Dave. Mm -hmm. the, but the Michigan Pension Fund buys 400000 in Tesla stock. So now they have invested interest in, te in Tesla. So they spent about 75 what, $80 million on Tesla stock. They won't buy gold, but they'll buy Tesla stock. <laughs> Okay, so now the, the, the now the, the hard working pensioners of this country are getting screwed over by stupid financial decisions such as this, and it infuriates me. It's wrong, it's criminal. And you see that now they have Tesla stock and now they have a vested interest in it, and this is a company that once the coffers are cut, once the spigot of government subsidies is shut, shuts off, which it will. And Dave, you and I know for sure it's going to happen, right? Yes. That Tesla stock goes to nothing because Tesla will pack up and leave and Elon Musk will take his billions and fly out of the country. It is a disgusting scheme. And that's what's happening with pension funds. That's, this is an example. The rest of the pension funds in this country, we've heard about what happened with... Uh, uh, John Kasich, the idiot over there, Mr. You know, former you know, uh, uh, Lehman brother Morgan Stanley uh, f uh, fluffer boy, right? What did he do? Well, he took Ohio State's pension fund, signed it over to some cronies in Wall Street. And what did Wall Street do in the last five years? They drove a billion-dollar pension fund into the toilet. They drove it into the ground head first, and they smiled and laughed all the way through it. Okay? In five years, They've collected $780 million in fees. And I talk to any single person who deals with a financial advisor or a financial professional. It's a joke. And sitting across from them and saying, hey, what's, what, what are you being charged to, to having these idiots manage your fund? Oh, 2%. No, it's not. Then we do a statement analysis, Dave, and we find out these pension funds are paying 10 15% in fees. They're getting raped over the coals. And I do mean raped over the coals. You know? <laughs> Unbelievable. So you couple that chicanery and the fact that negative interest rates are coming. And these pension funds and insurance funds require, you know, the, the, a certain percentage per year in order to maintain profitability. This is the second torpedo. I mean, you can count on one hand how many funds pension funds in this country, Dave, are actually funded. You can count it on one hand. There's less than 10. Okay, maybe two hands. Less than 10, Dave. Right. Unbelievable. So they're done. So all you pensioners, if you're, if you're not in that, that, that top 10 category, you're screwed. There's no pension waiting for you. What happens when the dollar then is removed and they decide, okay, let's have a domestic currency and an international currency what happens to all those electronic funds are they still there are they devalued they're they're all going to be devalued considerably um and yeah they're all going to be devalued and recalculated into whatever the new currency and its price positioning would be secondly whatever retirement account that you got floating out there, like a 401k right. or ira that's going to be absorbed by who? Good old Uncle Sam. And that's why Odumbo, uh, I think it was last year he or the year before, he uh, launched the Myra, you know, right. yes. the governmental program to soak up all these, um, you know, 401ks and, and Roth IRAs. I mean, for, I mean, Dave, isn't it amazing? It's like these guys are, are telegraphing to all of us what they're going to do. And, and, and people listen to this. Ah, oh, this is some fear porn. This is like a conspiracy theory. No dummy. It's an agenda. And you better get smart and figure out how this agenda plays out. Otherwise, this scenario is going to grip you by the throat very quickly and harshly, and you'll wake up to a reality where you have no money in the bank, you have nothing going for you, your wealth is wiped up, and you're, you're wiped out, and your kids are screaming because they're hungry. That's the reality for most people when they wake up to this day. That is true. And V, you know something? When Obama and whatever talking head comes out and they tell you that, you know, th what they're doing, they always make it seem like it's in the best interest for the people. It's good for you. It's, and they always spin it that way. 
And when you look through it, you see that, no, this is not good for anybody. It's good for them. Right. It's good for the bankers. It's good for the corporations. It's good for everyone except for the people. Exactly. And that's the problem with these politicians, man. They, they hide their disdain and avarice, you know, to us. They hide it behind their altruism. Like they really give a rat's rear end towards us and what we care about in our fund. No, it's, it's Hillary Clinton. Okay. Why is Hillary in the spotlight? Well, she got caught. She got exposed and she's an idiot. But the fact of the matter remains, Hillary Clinton is symptomatic of the system that we have in this country. You know, Barbara Boxer is just as corrupt. Nancy Pelosi is just as corrupt. There's that lady named Cho Lee, whatever, from California, some some dingbat congresswoman who made who went from like you know zero dollars in her bank account to having five millions because she's all of a sudden all of a sudden Dave she discovered a secret to trade the most volatile options trades and 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 VIX trades the world has ever seen. I mean, option trades that would make the most experienced traders blush as to how how risky it is and this woman is able to pull it off and take three hundred dollars making it to five million in less than five years give me a break you know it's a joke i I would love for her to 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 uh show uh all of us like you know i would love for her to have to to do these trades right in front of some sec officials to see how it's done right Mm -hmm. but of course the sec won't do that because the regulators and these criminal politicians are walking in lockstep together, you know? That's absolutely true. It, it's terrible, man. No, there's nothing that's good for us. It's all what's good for them. And, and, and the faster you realize that, folks, you got to understand, the system is gaming you, okay? Everything in this country is damn weaponized. I mean, we talk about the, the overt weaponization of, let's say, you know, paramilitary or, or police or security apparatuses. But nobody looks at the fact that you have weaponized banking, which, by the way, is going to be a title of this book that I'm writing, right? Weaponized banking. Okay, nobody looks at that. The banking is weaponized against you. The Internet is weaponized against you, right? All these things are weaponized against you. And and the faster you wake up to the fact that you can no longer be a passive participant in an active media, but you you need yourself need to be active and participating and, 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 uh, and filtering information and finding out for yourself what is real what is truth what is not the faster you do that the better off you will be the i just wanted to switch gears here and i just wanted to talk about uh the middle east for a sec Mm -hmm. um we know russia they've been bombing the islamic state uh like crazy now they're using an air base in iran yes and they're just i mean the, the territory of the islamic state is shrinking shrinking down to nothing Oh yeah, these guys are like you know shaving off their beards, putting on burkas, and hightailing it out at any available opportunity. The Russians are doing a fantastic job. Um, Bashir al-Assad's uh, forces are doing a fantastic job. Hands off to them. Um, people who call uh, Assad a tyrant, a madman, a dictator, this, that, and the other, don't understand Syria. They don't understand anything. I mean, the guy is an Alawite Muslim. He's he's secular. He's incredibly moderate. Christians. Look, my, apart from my mother's side, I come from an ancient Syrian Christian family that, that was a merchant class, okay? Um, Christians have been living in Syria, okay? There's, there's so many Christians living in Syria, hundreds of thousands of them, for, for thousands of years, no problem, until Eusis showed up. And let's be honest, let's call it Eusis. Mm-hmm. Eusis showed up and, and creating all this muckety muck, right? So, yeah, Putin's doing a great job bombing it. But isn't it funny, Dave, that as the Russians are wiping the floor with him, the U.S. is dropping supplies, quote unquote, for uh, moderate forces in Syria, right? I, I mean, right. give me a break. And we know what these supplies are. They're rearming. They're, exactly. you know, it's everything. But China now is getting involved. Yep. Uh, now they're in the picture. They're in the Middle East arena right now. Mm-hmm. Where I- is where is all this going? What is the United States doing there? And where is this all going to go? I mean, what's their plan? Well, the U.S.'s plan, okay, the, you got some neocons and neolibs, which are basically, uh, you know, two turds in the same toilet bowl. Um, what their, what, what, you know, their plans are uh, to create as much ruckus, 
uh, try to bring us to the brink of war. I don't, you know, I don't think these these lunatics want us to go into a nuclear type of exchange with the Russians or the Chinese. We'll be wiped out very rapidly. Um, but you know, they want to bring us to that level. You know, play chicken. You know, we're playing a game of nuclear chicken all over the world. We're doing it in the Middle East. We're doing it in the South China Seas. And these are posturing. And I and I and and I think. And I'm hoping and praying, and I, I know that Putin sees this, but at the same time, you know, Putin and Xi Jinping are going to take the the required measures to make sure that these these idiots in D.C. don't get too happy on the trigger finger, okay? And right. God forbid, launch a a nuke or something, you know, or do something stupid. So they're they're very careful, and also I thank God that there are good guys in the military that are preventing this from happening as well. Nobody wants a war. It's going to be suicide. It's going to be mass death for the entire world if we go into a nuclear exchange. So there is a there is a resistance to this, and and you know what the good guys, as well as the the Russians and and the Chinese have figured out something, and the weak underbelly of this entire global globalization new world order elephant, Dave, is the dollar. So the more bellicose the U.S. is becoming, the more saber rattling that the U.S. is doing, the key. To kill this mad elephant that is rummaging through the forest, eating up everybody's, uh, you know, harvests and wrecking all the villages here is to take a massive gun loaded with a golden bullet and it's called a de-dollarization gun and it's going to be pulled by the Russians and the Chinese and, and that will be the end of the elephant. And that's, that's what they have to do. They're going to have to kill the dollar before these idiots wind up killing all of us. And that's exactly what's happening globally. And that's what we see with earlier on the show when we talked about the dollar dumping. Do you think the U.S. will just back out of Syria um, and say, OK, we're done here? Because once Russia and now China, that is also now um, helping the military um, uh, with Assad, once they remove the Islamic State, what is the purpose of the United States in Syria? They're there now to fight the Islamic State. They're bombing to get rid of the terrorism. Well, we know this is all fake. But <clears throat> this is their story. This is the, the tale they're telling the world. Once Russia brings the Islamic State to almost nothing, what does the United States do at this point? Well, you, you look at the situation in Syria. They, they can't get involved. They've, they've tried, you know, setting up false flags as a pretext to get involved. If Assad sets off a chemical uh, weapon, mm -hmm. then that's the red line. And, and we're going to go ahead and, and get involved. It's a human rights violation, says, the, it says one of the biggest human rights violators in the world. Um, so what happened? In, in, in September of 2013, uh, a chemical weapon was launched. It was... You know, these jihadis who have an IQ of 50 were videotaping themselves doing it. <laughs> and that whole narrative fell apart on Obama's face. So everywhere that they've done and what they've done to turn, like MH17 being shot down over Ukraine, right? Mm -hmm. All these things, all these false flags in order to create a bigger crisis, you know, to draw the Russians in just to chaos for chaos sakes. So they can dump the economy and blame the Russians and the Chinese for dumping the economy and ruining the dollar, which is really we're the ones who are ruining the economy and killing the dollar. All those false fact pretexts have blown up in their faces, Dave. So the U.S., is the U.S. going to get more involved in Syria? No. They're, they're involved as much as they're going to get involved. There's a lot of pushback from the Pentagon. It's the CIA uh, cronies that are running the, the shop there. The, you know, the, you, you, you've seen some of these guys. These guys are brilliant. A couple of them have been caught in Moscow. Have you seen that, Dave? Have you seen yes. the pictures of these, of these elite operatives wearing blonde wigs that, that barely fit properly, looking like absolute uh, stoned hippie kids coming out of a, a, a drug rave party? I mean, have you seen these pictures? It's, it's incredible. This, this is what the CIA is recruiting these days, you know? I mean, my, my, you know, I've, I've had this talk with a buddy of mine. I said, if you're going to be the nefarious evil empire on the planet Earth, at least be good at it. <laughs> at least be good at it. These guys are terrible, Dave. Absolutely terrible. But in terms of you know, what's going on, is there further involvement? No, I think it's going to be more saber rattling. It's going to be more, hey, look at us, Russia. We're 50 miles from your border. We're going to do a military exercise. Look, look at this old antiquated pieces of equipment that we're... We're pushing up towards your border. Are you frightened? 
And the Russians sit there and laugh. They they have like energy weapons that, that could just shut that whole thing down in, in a matter of seconds, and it'll be it'll be an absolute terror storm at that point. Uh, same thing in the South China Seas. We're we're floating the like the, these these um you know destroyers and ships into you know into these islands that you know that that China is having a you know China's being aggressive. They're being absolutely aggressive. Okay, so China takes six islands, which territorially and historically have been part of their territorial fishing waters since 600 AD, Dave. China takes six islands, they start developing, and we get into a conniption fit. Meanwhile, Vietnam has 40 islands. We don't say nothing. Well, I guess that's okay, because Vietnam is one of our buddies, you know, so it's okay. Unbelievable. Uh, the rest of the world's woke, woken up to this fraud, and uh, even the countries that are, that are in the South China Sea, they're, they're working out the differences with themselves peaceably. They're all part of the ACN, you know, the Asian South Economic, you know, cooperation mm -hmm. they have going over. They're all part of the ACN group, right? And they are they're the solutions. Why? Because economics is the underlying driver for every human activity. And the people say, hey, you know what? Let's just, you know, figure out a, a, a mutually beneficial relationship for all of us. You guys could have your six islands, you know. The only one that's making a big deal of it is the friggin' U.S. Why? Because, oh, my God, China's aggressive. Give me a break. China ain't building those six islands off the coast of L.A. They're doing it like, you know, 6,000 miles away. Leave them alone, you know? Uh, that, Unreal, that, Dave. That's true. I mean, it's in the South China Sea. 